My brothers and sisters, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guiding us to the faith of Islam. Many of us who are probably sitting here were born into Muslim families or born into families where we learn from our elders, from parents about Islam, and mainly the practice of faith. It takes years and, and, and the growing up that we try and we experience the life as a Muslim and the concepts of Iman, the concept of Allah as a sovereign, the concept that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Malik and the Creator and the Rabbul Alameen. The concept and the Iman that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and we do not associate any partners with Him. It takes some years and I see some of you as parents, yes, initially we encourage our children on the physical aspects of the deen, praying, learning how to recite Quran. But it, once they start to reach maturity, that we help them try to understand the concepts and the reasons that why do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that why are we created? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajeem in the Qur'an, wa ma khalaqtu al-jinna wal-insa illa liya'abudun, that we have been created, people and, and jinn, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this concept of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in, in the whole sense, in the concept that it is not only with five daily prayers. It is not only to fast in the month of Ramadan. It is not only that we go for Hajj if we have the means and resources to do so. Or to pay zakat if we have the wealth that we must pay. But it is in a whole some way that as a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, each and every affair of my life must revolve around this concept of worship and a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the life that I'm living at home, the life that I'm living at school, or the life that I'm living at my work, or I'm driving on the road, or I'm going for shopping, all of that and even the time that I am alone with myself, It should encompass the life of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what we learn from the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That as revelation started to come and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his character was, was known in the society as the one of a sadiq and al amin His character was known in the society that a person who would never lie or never cheat, a man of a character, and then when revelation started to come and the role of the Prophet ﷺ as a messenger of Allah and the one that who is inviting humanity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed from that role of an individual now to role of a leader and the one that who guides people towards Allah. Invitation towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inviting humanity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your Rabb and Creator and we do not worship anyone else but Allah. So this understanding and realization that I worship my Rabb and my Creator and none else, this, this gives us this freedom. Freedom of choice and also freedom to think beyond personal as an individual but looking at what is my role in the society, and this is where we come as witnesses unto mankind.
that as Muslim and as I believer, that I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I have no doubt in my mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my creator and my Rabb, and I worship Allah alone. It is that great sense of liberation that elevates human beings from the level of a person who is just born, who was born and, and is living a life from a person now who has submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, in, and in by his own witness, by his own character, by his own presence in the society is delivering a message that I am the one that who has submitted to Allah and this is my life as the, as the one that who is ibadah of Allah and no one else. A life which is fully in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not just by our words, but a life by our actions. So when we say, how do we as Muslims should be witnesses unto mankind, witnesses of this truth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And the greatest of death, that haq is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Rabb, Rabbul Alameen, and there's no one associated with him in that worship and in his characters and qualities and attributes. This is, my brothers and sisters, what witnesses unto mankind means. And that witnesses as being witnesses unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the haq and right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that now how do we manifest from our actions in the society that we live? It is a task which is not easy task. And it doesn't matter where we live. It doesn't matter if we are living in a society where we are surrounded by people who say, yes, we are Muslim. Or we are living in a society where majority of the people, yes, they have some understanding of God, but then they associate, then they, then they are confused how to worship this God that is there. So we see and experience people from all backgrounds and all practices of faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses us in the Qur'an and reminds us of our duty and responsibility. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَذَلِكَ جِعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونَ الشُّهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ شَهِيدًا عَلَيْكُمْ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا That you, we have made you a balanced nation and addressing those who have submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, we have made you into a balanced nation. We are not people of the extremes. We are balanced in our affairs because this deen teaches us to be balanced, to be just in our affairs. And with that quality of being just and balanced people, we must reach out to our fellow human beings and invite them to live a life of being a just and balanced human beings. And what is that life of being a just human beings? Is the life that submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that he obeys and worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and not only himself, but he helps people around himself or herself how to live that life of being a just and balanced human being. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this, this quality of, of this ummah, this quality of the people who submit to that, that they become, they are the witnesses to the people and the messenger is witnesses unto them. So we are tied from both sides. We are given this task of being witnesses unto people by our words by our action and relate our life with the life of Rasulullah that he made us and delivered it to us and given us this task that now you go and take this message to the people around until the end of the nations, until the end of the world. And we believe that the guidance is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hidayah comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
addresses Rasulullah in the Quran that you have become so worried and you are engaged so much that you are so passionate for people to save people that it is also impacting you, hurting you. And the reminder is that guidance is from me and your task is to deliver. Your task is to invite humanity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this, my brothers and sisters, is our task and our role and our responsibility. Inviting humanity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the footsteps of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa How do we do it? Right? So the question is that, yes, we understand. We believe as Muslims that we have been given this task to be role models for the society. Role models in the sense that a community of believers who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their moral and their character is a guidance for the rest of the society. So the first question that we must ask ourselves is, our morals, my morals, my character, individually and collectively as an American Muslim community. Are we presenting ourselves as those who have submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? As those who follow the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa As individuals and as a community of believers. As individuals, and I am emphasizing again, and when, when we say as individuals, in our, in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in the places that we work, in the educational institutions that we go to and, and learn knowledge, are we seen as role models in the society? 300 plus and so Americans, do they see us that um, this Muhammad or Ahmed or Aisha or Fatima, are they role models for our community and in our society? So that is upon each and every one of us sitting here and not sitting here. But anyone who says, and I am a Muslim, and I belong to American Muslim community, each and every one of us will have to be answerable for our role in the society personally. And the second aspect is collectively as a community. What role are we playing in the society collectively? And when we look at the seerah of Rasulullah and how Rasulullah developed his community, how Rasulullah was engaged and his community was engaged in uplifting the society, in, in addressing the moral issues that, that was causing a decline of his community and his society. Sound is working. So alhamdulillah, when we talk about this aspect of the seerah of Rasulullah that standing up for the oppressed members of the society and not shying away from it, even though that he himself was being oppressed or his followers were being oppressed at that moment. We talk about how American Muslim community is facing this rise of Islamophobia and all of that. Yes, those things are there. But having said that, the questions that we must ask how are we countering that? And with what message are we countering that? There were protesters yesterday just saying vulgar things and, and vulgar language against our deen, our Prophet Wasallam. How did we engage with that? I saw some of the brothers and sisters going and confronting and trying to confront. But, you know, this is just, a, that was just a small example. It was just a small number of people who had come 
with that kind of language and vulgarity. Ikna's Why Islam or Gain Peace Dawa projects, they receive calls, many calls, which are much more vulgar and much more hurting when it comes to our faith and our prophet and our Quran and things like that. But how do we, addressing those calls, addressing those people is, again from learning from the Sunnah of Rasulullah that if someone was throwing garbage on him and one day did not do that, Rasulullah went to find out what happened. When someone was leaving the town because she didn't want to listen to this new message that this person was delivering the society, and Prophet himself helped her with her luggage. Role model is becoming a role model in the society is very taxing and very difficult and very challenging. But once we will start doing that, that we are an American Muslim community who cares for people. We love humanity. We are a balanced group of people. We are not just angry people. We are not just people who shout. We are not just those people that are shown on the media to be yelling and screaming. But we are people who follow Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who was kind, who was just, who was generous, who took care of the needy and the poor of the society. There are over 40 million Americans who are considered food insecure. All of our masajid, over 2,500 of our Islamic centers and communities and masajid, what can we do to help people who are going through such a difficult life as Americans? There are, just in this city that we are holding this convention, there are almost 12,000 homeless people just in Washington, D.C. And in every major city, being is as the coldest as the city of Chicago in winter, you will find homeless people. As the American Muslim community, what can we do to help them come out of that misery and difficult life. As American Muslim community, what can, we, what can we do in fighting oppression of African American community? What can we do to address the issue of drugs in the society? What can we do to address the issues of gun violence in our society? These are some of the areas, my brothers and sisters, that we can play a role in the community and the society so that people can look and see that Muslims care. And Muslims not, are not only caring for themselves, but they care for the society at large. They care for every person who is being oppressed in the society. They care for those who are struggling because their children do not have access to good education. And we as Muslims and American Muslim community being part of school boards so that we can help those who are not able to get proper education for their children. The standards of education, my brothers and sisters, varies depending upon different communities. And I'm sure many of us, when we choose our neighborhoods, we choose which school districts are better for our children, and we choose those areas and those towns to, to move into. Just imagine, that there are some areas and some districts in our own communities where school districts are not good, but who are the people who are living in those school districts? Don't, shouldn't we be caring for their children as well? So these are some of the things, my brothers and sisters, that we as American Muslim community can do, can be engaged in the society. It's not only the political process, it's the social justice process. It's that justice that society is still struggling for. That people with power and wealth, they can change the dynamics of the country. But when we, people of faith, 
and especially people of faith as American Muslims who submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we know that we will be answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our time that we are spending in this society and this world. How are we going to make a difference and how are we going to be witnesses unto mankind? I will leave you to that. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.